Uh, good morning, everybody. Today is the 2nd of October 2020. Right now, I am with the 10 Cambridge class. The day is Friday, and the subject we are studying is uh, Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mother. Today's aim is to, to continue with the preparation of the topic of the heat. And in our last, uh, when we have this online class uh, on the last Friday, we completed from 2002 to 2010 all the MCQs which were related with the topic of the heat. So today's target is to work on the winter papers. We will be working from 2002 to 2010. And we'll be working on the winter papers, MCQ papers. And uh, if you want to see uh, the last two videos which we did on the MCQs from 2002 to 2010, you can find them in the YouTube channel. I have also shared this, uh, those videos, the links of those videos in the Google Classroom. So, okay, let's start. And we are starting from the winter 2002 paper. And this is the first question. Let me increase the size so it's visible to you. Okay, this is winter 2002. And it's the question on the topic of heat. They start from the question number 11. Uh, it's, it's, it's on your screen right now. You can see a liquid evaporates rapidly. Why does it cool? Why does it cool? Any idea? Yes, sir. Yeah, why? Give me your idea. Sir, the molecules with the... Sir, the molecules with the higher kinetic energy or which are... Uh, we can say that which are more hot, they will escape into the surroundings, whereas the molecules with lesser kinetic energy or the cold molecules will remain on our uh, skin or on the surface, making it cold, colder. Yes, because the molecules with the higher kinetic energy in the process of evaporation, they leave from the surface, leaving behind less uh, energetic molecules in the body of the liquid. So the average kinetic energy of the liquid uh, goes down. So that's why the temperature goes down. So the reason is because some of the most energetic molecules leave the liquid. So what's the choice? B part. B is the answer. Yes, B is the answer. Very good. Okay, on your screen, you can see we have question number. This is question number. 12 on your screen. When ice melts to become water, which force must be overcome? When you melt solid converted into liquid, so which forces must be overcome? Famous name. Say the forces between the molecules. The intermolecular forces, that is the force of attraction between the molecules of the water with each other. So what should be the choice? C part. The force between molecules. Yes, so C is the right choice. The force between molecules, which we normally call intermolecular forces. So winter 2002 paper we are doing on the topic of heat. Question number 13 is on your screen. It says, uh, let me reduce the size. So Okay, a substance is heated in an enclosed space until it becomes a gas. After the heater is removed, the temperature is cooled to at regular intervals. The graph shows temperature plotted against time. So it was converted into gas, but it was enclosed in a container. It, the thing was converted into gas, and then we allowed it to cool. So the thing was it was gas, and we are allowed allowing it to cool. So what does the substance represent? So it's cooling, it was gas. So what cooling, is happening? Uh, the graph. Is what do you think, what is happening at the peak? It's cooling. So the gas. So the change in state. Change in state. Yeah, it does. state change is taking place. But which state is converting into which state? Sir, so gas into liquid. Gas into yes. liquid. So what yeah. was this process? 
Sir, we say to condensation. Call condensation. So, what is the choice? B condensing. In part. So the condensation is taking place. Yeah, it was a gas. It was cooling. So the PQ is the first flat uh, graph there. The section of the graph which uh, became flat. That means the state is changing, and it was gas which so converting into liquid. So that is called condensation. So the B is the right choice. Winter 2002 paper, we are doing in the topic of heat, we are preparing, and uh, we are on the MCQ number 14. A student is given a thermometer that needs 1 degree centigrade in pure melting ice and 101 degree centigrade in pure boiling water. She uses it to measure the temperature of some water before and after it is heated. The increase in the temperature of the water calculated from her result is. Try to understand this. This is a little uh, tricky question. The, the thermometer has a zero error. The thermometer has a zero error. When the actual temperature is zero, it reads one degree centigrade. When the actual temperature is 100, it reads 101 degree centigrade. So there is a error of one degree, zero error of one degree. Correct. So B part. But you will take the readings. The reading will be one more than the actual reading. But if you take the difference, if you may, if you take the initial reading and the final reading, and then you calculate the difference, the difference will have no uh, error in it. For example, if you do the 101 minus 1, that's 100. From ice to sea, the change in the temperature should be 100. You see, the change in the temperature is not affected by the zero error. I'm saying if you calculate the change in the temperature, the zero error will have no effect on the change in the temperature. So if you calculate the increase in the temperature, it is not influenced by the zero error in the instrument. So what will be the choice? Okay, sir. B part. Understood. So what's the choice? B. B part, correct. So B is the right choice, sir. 14. Question 14. B is the right choice. Okay, on your screen, uh, we have question number 15, winter 2002 paper we are doing. Fiber is used for home insulation in a cold country, as shown in the diagram. Heat cannot easily escape through the ceiling because the fiber, if you see the structure of the fiber, the fiber has air trapped in it. Fiber has air trapped in it. In the structure, we have bubbles of air. So the due to that air, the conduction and uh, the convection cannot take place through the fiber. So, traps air. What is the choice? Heat cannot be the fiber. So, what is the choice? A, part, A, A is the right answer, sir. A is the right answer. Question number 15 A is the right answer. On your screen, we have question number uh, 16 is showing on your screen. The diagram shows four similar cans. Each can contains the same volume of water initially at 80 degrees centigrade. After five minutes, which can we contain the coolest water, which will lose the most heat, which can will be the coolest so I think the one A part. which has no lid on it, plus which has black, dull black color outside, because the dull black color would be a very good radiator of the heat, plus it has no lid on it, so the through the evaporation, the heat will be lost. So the fastest uh, loss of heat will be done in that container, which has a dark black color outside and has no lid on it. So the choice is A. A part. 
Yeah, question number 16A is the track. Sir? Okay, the question number, yes. Sir, if we do it practically, if we have a black mug and a white or silvery mug and we pour into it, uh, both in both of them, some coffee, and if we place them under a fan, we will observe that the black one, uh, the coffee in the black mug will be cooler. Will it be, sir? Earlier. Because, yes, that's true. So, the next question is over the top of the wave. So, the... The, the question on the topic of heat from the winter 2002 paper are over. So from this paper, we have done question number 16. We have done question number 15. We have done question number 14. We have done question number 13. We have done question number 12. And we have done question number 11. So these were the questions which were related with the topic of the, topic of the, uh, you can see, heat. Okay, the next paper. Temperature. Uh, and the next paper is winter 2003. And from this paper, we are going to attempt questions which are related with the topic of heat. So let's open it. Okay. Okay. Question number 12. Okay, we are starting from question number 12. Assuming the temperature remains constant, which combination correctly describes the volume and the shape of a gas or liquid? Okay. Uh, the volume of the gas is uh, not constant, never fixed. And the shape of the gas is also not fixed. The liquid, its volume is fixed, but its shape is not fixed. Okay? So if you look at the choice A, it says gas, volume fixed. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay. B, gas, volume not fixed, shape not fixed. That is right. Uh, C choice, liquid, volume fixed. Shape fixed. The shape is not fixed. So the C is wrong. D, liquid, volume not fixed. That's wrong. The shape is fixed. That is also wrong. So what's the best choice? B part. B part. The gas is volume is not fixed. Shape of the gas is also not fixed. So B is the right choice. You understand? Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. We are yes, moving sir. to the next question. It says an axle is too large to fit into the hole in a wheel that is made of the same metal. How can the axle be made to fit in the hole? There are two things. Heat the hole and the axle will fit. Okay? Another thing you can do is you Cool the axle. You cool the axle, it will contract and then it will fit into the hole. You understand? Yes, sir. So how can the axle be made to fit into the hole? By pulling the ax axle alone. That is true. By pulling the wheel alone. Wheel should not be cooled because the hole will become smaller. By cooling both the axle and the wheel, that's wrong. By heating both the axle and the wheel, that is also wrong. Either you should cool the axle so it becomes smaller and then it will fit in the hole or you should heat the wheel so that that hole becomes bigger. So what is the choice? Sir, in this case, B part. Oh, A part, sir. A part. A is the right answer by putting the axle alone. A is the right choice for question number 13. Okay, on your screen you have a 2 kg mass of copper is heated for 40 seconds by a heater that produces 100 joules per second. This is the power given, okay? 100 joules per second means power is given. 
the specific heat capacity of the copper is 400 joules per kg per kelvin what is the rise in the temperature the change in the temperature is the question whenever the temperature changes the formula we use is heat is equals to mc delta theta can you do this question can you do this question yes sir it's easy first we will use the power formula and we will take out the the heat by using power is equal to energy divided by time 100 divided by 40 we will uh, then use that uh, that thing into into the formula into the heat is equal to mc delta apply the power with the time the power is 100 and the time is 40 so the heat you provided is 4000 joules the heat you provided is 4000 joules you know heat is equal to mc delta theta so heat is 4000 divided with the mass that is 2 and then divided with the C specific heat capacity that is 400. So the final answer will be 5, 5 Kelvin. So there will be a rise, what, rise in the temperature, how much that will be 5 Kelvin. You can do this calculation in your copy, you see. I'm working online, that's why it's a little problem. This is a problem for me. But you can do it in your copy and check whether you get the 5K answer. 5, 5 Kelvin, actually. Yes, sir, I got 5. The answer is 5. Okay, okay, okay. So everybody understands it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, G, we are moving to the next question. Uh, this is question number 15 from the paper printer 2003. In a vacuum flask, which method of heat transfers are prevented by the vacuum? Remember, vacuum cannot stop radiation. Vacuum cannot stop radiation. Convection and Condition. conduction, oh, yes, they require medium, so they cannot happen through the vacuum. So what's the answer you think? Conduction and convection. C part. C is the right conduction. answer. Conduction and convection only. It cannot stop radiation. Vacuum cannot stop the heat loss by the process of radiation. So C is the choice. Okay, my dear students, next question is on the topic of waves. So was winter 2003 and we have done question number 15, 14, 13, and 12. So these were the questions which were related with the topic of heat. Okay, so we are moving to the next paper. And the next paper is winter. The next paper is winter 2004. And we are doing the questions, the MCQ questions, which are related with the topic of heat because in our class, we have completed the topic of heat. So that's why we are preparing now the questions on the topic of heat. Okay, let me take out the, this is winter 2000 and uh, Okay. Okay, yeah, now we got it. So this is winter 2004 and the question number 16 is uh, from here. The questions start on the topic of heat. A student has three sealed plastic bags. One bag is full of gas, one of liquid and one of solid. A student sque squeezes each bag to see if it changes shape and warms each bag to see if it expands. Which bag contains gas? Okay. The gas bag will be very easy to squeeze. And when you provide it, it, it with the heat, it will, be, it will have the most expansion. Because whenever you provide heat to a liquid, to a gas, to a solid, the gas will have the most expansion. So that bag will have the gas, which can be 
easiest, which will be easiest to squeeze and will show most expansion on eating. So, my dear students, what's the choice? B part. B part, the one that changes shape easily and expands the most when heated. Yes, that's the characteristic of Yes. Do you all agree? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay, winter 2004, question number 17. We are doing MCQ questions. The diagram shows a cross section through a rainwater puddle formed in a shallow hole in our road surface. So you can see there is a puddle in the road, a shallow hole in the, in the road and due to the rain it's filled with water, so it's a puddle. Over a period of time, air, temperature, wind speed and wind direction remain constant. What happens to the rate of evaporation of water from the puddle? I think we have done this question in class also. What will happen to the rate of evaporation? Remain constant. The rate of evaporation will remain constant. Why? Sir, because the factors are also constant. The uh, one factor which, sir, you are not considering is the surface area of the water. When the water will evaporate, the level of the water in the shallow hole will go down. So when it will go down, the surface area of the water will decrease. If the surface area of the water will decrease, what will happen with the rate of evaporation? It will also decrease. Yes, the all other factors he raised, he says, remain constant. But that factor, the surface area of the water, that will be gradually decreasing. If that will be gradually decreasing, the rate of evaporation should also decrease. So now, what do you think? A part. It decreases because the surface area decreases. You understand? Yes, sir. The okay. Because she says, he says temperature remains same. He says wind condition remains same. He says uh, all other factors are same. But one thing is changing. As the water is evaporating, the level of the water in that hole will go down. If you look at the shape of that hole, when the level of the water will go down, the surface area of that okay, water sir. will gradually decrease. So that's why the rate of evaporation should also decrease. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay. So question number 17, uh, the choice is, uh, you said A. A is the choice? Yes, sir, A is the choice. Okay, G, question number 18 on your screen paper is winter 2004. A new liquid is tested to decide whether it is suitable for use in a liquid in glass thermometer. It is found that the liquid does not expand uniformly with the temperature. What will be the effect of this on the scale of the thermometer? I told you that when you use a liquid in the thermometer, it should expand uniformly with the temperature. If it does not expand uniformly with the temperature, the scale of the of the thermometer will be no more linear. It's a technical thing. It's, it will be no more linear. It means the spacing between the degrees will be no more same same throughout the thermometer. The scale will be no more linear. So what's the choice? B part. B is the right answer. This is a little new, 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 new thing, okay? So B is the right choice. The scale will be no more linear. The next question on your screen. Question number 19. The fillings for a hole in a tooth should be made from a material that 
expands more than the hole in the tooth, expands by the same amount as the hole in the tooth, expands less than the hole in the tooth, or does not expand when they hit it. The filling in the teeth, the material should be expanding. This expansion should be the same expansion which the teeth will have. If they, the teeth and the filling have different expansions, the cracks will develop and the filling will come out. What do you think? What's the choice? What is the choice? Sir, B part? Expands by the same amount as the hole in the tooth. Yeah, that is the choice. It should. Otherwise, the filling will come out. Cracks will develop in the filling. Okay, sir. It will separate from the tooth. So, B is the choice. Heat energy is supplied at the same rate, 200 gram of paraffin and 200 gram of water in similar containers. Why does the temperature of the paraffin rise more quickly if you have the same mass of paraffin and same mass of water and you are providing them heat at the same rate for the same time? So why there will be a more temperature rise in paraffin? The reason is one thing which is different in, different in paraffin and the water is their specific heat capacity. The temperature of the paraffin rises more because it has low specific heat capacity. So its temperature will rise more quickly. What's the choice? B part. The paraffin has a smaller specific yes, heat capacity. Temperature will rise faster. B is the right choice. The paraffin has a smaller specific capacity than water. So B is the right choice. Here we come. G. Question number 21. A teacher has a large tank of water in which he wants to set up a convection current. Remember this thing. If you want to set up convection currents in water, then there are two methods. By two methods, you can set up convection currents. One is by heating. So if you want to create convection currents by heating, you are supposed to heat from the bottom. If you, the second method is to create the convection currents in water, you can do it by cooling also. But when you do the cooling, the cooling should be done from the top. If you want to do the Set up the convection curves by cooling. The cooling is done by the from the top. If you want to do it by the heating, the heating is done by from the bottom. So what's the choice? What is the choice? Sir, cooling at X or cooling at Y? When you want to set up the convection currents by cooling. The cooling should be done from the top. So what should be the choice? You gave me two answers at the same time. At, cooling at uh, Y. Y, obviously Y. Yes, B is the right choice. Cooling at Y. Cooling from the top. So it will set the convection. You understand? Yes, sir. So the question number 22 is on the topic of waves. So this was the winter 2004 paper. And let's, uh, let's move. I have just very short time in the class. Uh, let me open the winter 2005 paper and quickly do it. Winter 2005 paper. And it's an MCQ paper. And we are doing the questions on the topic of heat. And because we are preparing the topic of heat uh, for assessments or for exam, whatever you think. Because I told you that only listening to lectures and only reading the book, will not, you will not be prepared for the exam, okay? Okay, the question number 15, winter 2005 paper. Quickly, we will do these questions. What will not affect the rate of evaporation from the surface of a liquid? Which factor will not affect the rate of evaporation? Depth of the liquid, 100%. Depth of the liquid do not affect the rate of evaporation. 
draw above the surface of the liquid, the wind above the surface of the liquid, that affects surface area of the liquid, that affects the evaporation. Temperature of the liquid, that also affects the rate of evaporation. So which factor do not affect the rate of evaporation? The first one, depth of the liquid. You understand? Do you understand? Okay, so we, uh, the next question is question number uh, 16 on your screen. What makes a thermometer sensitive to small changes in temperature? What makes a thermometer sensitive to small changes in temperature? A bulb with a thin glass wall? A shiny liquid in its bore? A stem with a thick glass wall? A very narrow bore is a famous, famous factor. So the right choice is D, a very narrow bore, a bore with the smaller diameter. That makes the thermometer more sensitive. So the choice is D. Question number 16, the choice is D. So the next question, question number 17 is on your screen, a hot liquid, a hot liquid is carefully poured into a beaker. The graph shows how its temperature changes as it cools towards room temperature. Which processes are taking place at the region X? So it was a liquid and at, at it the liquid was cooling and at the region X, the graph, the cooling curve becomes flat. So it means a state change is taking place. So if state change is taking place, it was liquid, it was cooling, state change is taking place. So the liquid is converting into solid. The liquid is converting into solid. The solidification is taking place. And you know, the rate of the evaporation will continue. So the evaporation is happening and the solidification is happening at the at the X. So D is the right choice. Question number 17, D is the right choice. Uh, solidification and evaporation. The next question on your screen, you can see question number 18. Let me reduce the size so you can see the whole thing. The diagram shows a room seen from above. It is cooled, it is, sorry, it is cold outside the room. The room is heated by a small fire in the fireplace. Where is the most heat loss by convection? So you see the heat loss convection. So where you have put the fireplace, from the fireplace there is a chimney. And from the chimney, the hot air will be going out. The chimney is basically for the smoke. But it's the hot air which is going out. So the convection will be going out and through the chimney. So where is the most heat lost by convection? That should be the chimney. So B is the right choice. B is the right choice for question number 18. Okay, the next question, the tricky one. It's a little tricky, question number 19. It says, uh, yeah. An experiment is carried out as shown in the diagram. Steam, uh, you can see where we have a test tube. In the test tube, we have a metal gauze to keep the ice down. We have ice cube in that test tube. We have water in that test tube. And it's, the test tube is little tilted, and the top of the uh, test tube is being uh, heated by the Bunsen burner. And the water at the top is boiling. But the ice at the bottom is still ice. It's not boiling. It's not melting even. Why does the ice take a long time to melt even though the water at the top of the tube is boiling? The reason is the heat from the upper water cannot come down uh, because the heat travels by the process of convection in the water. And by the convection, the heat do not go downward. The ice cube is at the bottom of the test tube. 
The big reason is because the water, another way is the heat can, could have reached the ice cube through the water is by conduction in the water. But the water is a bad or water is a poor conductor of heat. So that's why the heat from the top is not reaching the ice cube very efficiently. So the answer is water is a poor conductor of heat. Water is B a part. poor conductor of Water is a poor heat. conductor of heat. Yeah. So the question number 20 is on the topic of the wave. This was printed 2005. And my dear students, uh, today uh, we we have done winter papers from 2002 to 2005. We have worked on the MCQ papers, and we were doing the questions on the topic of uh, on the topic of you know uh, what we call it uh, heat. So my name is Pranan Mazar, and I was the Dan Cambridge uh, boys class. And today is the second of the uh, October 2020, and right now I have uh, completed the MCQs from 2002 to 2005 winter, and I hope that you have understood it. So um, thank you very much, everybody, and I hope you have understood it. And God bless you all. I will stop the recording, and after that we will have that attendance. Okay. So we thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all.